Road course rangers are not a new concept in the world of NASCAR. If you turn back the pages of NASCAR history a few decades, you'll likely find the story of the legendary Dan Gurney, who famously won four straight races at Riverside, lapping the entire field in 1964, while maintaining the peak of their Formula One career simultaneously. But right now, road course ringers pose a big thorn in NASCAR's side, and it's not because they can come in, look fast immediately, win a race, and embarrass the likes of Chase Elliott and co before sailing off into a glorious sunset, but because they can't. We've all heard about Shane Van Gisbergen and their famous win at Chicago, but it's unlikely that we'll see a new winner every week NASCAR goes somewhere with the right turns. And that's a problem, because road course ringers are a huge part of NASCAR's attempts to grow the fan base beyond the oval aficionados. In the last year alone, we've seen Kimi Raikkonen, Jensen Button, Jordan Taylor, Mike Rockefeller, Kamui Kobayashi, Brody Kostecki, and of course SVG take to the track in the Cup Series. This has resulted in huge spikes in NASCAR viewership, outside of the usual broadcast demographics. But at Indianapolis Road Course two weeks ago, despite the wealth of global talent on show, it was a struggle for almost all of the names I just mentioned. This is obviously not what NASCAR wants. When SVG won in Chicago, it was both a stunning upset and a fulfillment of what we all have been hoping for, given that we know all too well now how talented the chaps from the world of F1 and V8 supercars can be behind the wheel. But on track, they failed to make a long-term lasting impression. The only time you saw Kobayashi or Button on the indie broadcast was when they were getting into a grudge match with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at the back. For somebody watching NASCAR for the first time because of these global drivers, it won't leave a good taste in the mouth. So how do we fix this issue? It's not a simple problem, and it won't have a simple one-size-fits-all solution. What we need is a way to help these global motorsport stars get the best out of their appearances, in the hopes that they perform well, and then we encourage them to run full-time in the future like SVG is considering, or to send them back to their own formulas with grins on their faces to drum up far more publicity in the future. These ideas are all well and good, but how do we make this a reality instead of a half-baked marketing pitch? First and foremost, we need to get them more time behind the wheel. At Indianapolis, it wasn't any driver's first time behind the wheel of a cup car, but especially for Kobayashi and Kostecki, it was their first time sharing the track with other NASCAR drivers. And for Jensen Button and Mike Rockenfeller, it was their first time in a NASCAR spec car since running show runs at the Garage 56 Camaro at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, having last run in anger either at the Chicago Street Course or at Le Mans itself. Ultimately, it was a big leap for everyone involved. Running tests at Road America or the Charlotte Roval on the simulator isn't the same as getting into a boiling hot 3300 pound race car with hard boiled cup series regulars surrounding you on all sides going 130 miles an hour into turn one. So despite the hype and the press spiel about how well Jensen or Kamui or Brody have been incredibly exciting in preparing for their appearances, they're hardly on a level playing field when the green flag flies, especially if they're doing so in a second-hand Rick Ware or 2311 or RCR car, which won't be close to the performance levels of the cars that their full-time counterparts are driving. So how do we even the odds? I think we should do this by giving any potential road course ringer their own dedicated test and practice sessions as part of the track's weekend schedule. Similar to Formula One's Friday practice format, where junior drivers are given a chance in top level cars, this would help rubber in new blood, and would also remove the need for them to run the trucks or Xfinity races preparation, freeing up spaces in those formulas for full-time younger talent, while saving smaller outfits crucial budget should the likes of Sam Mayer decide they don't feel like racing too cleanly on that particular day. The problem with NASCAR's current format is that if a road course ringer does head to victory lane, there's no real reward or incentive beyond some publicity for the next couple of weeks. What we need is more of an incentive for teams to get their road course ringers fighting at the front in order to avoid the early 2000s start and park plague and the subsequent decline in road course driver interest. As we all know, playoff eligibility is only for full-time drivers. But what if it wasn't? What if SVG's groundbreaking win at Chicago meant that they were contracted to run the postseason races going for the title? It would give a more accurate sense of the wildcard edition than a random Eric Almarola appearance ever could. NASCAR has had never had a non-American champion, and only six foreign drivers have ever won a race. But should they choose to run a full non-oval program, with maybe a minimum of five races participated, if they pick up a win, I'd say they've more than earned a spot in the playoffs, and this would absolutely rake in the international viewers' NASCAR craze. And with more road courses in the Cup Series this year than ever before, I think NASCAR should see fit to offer that extra bit of risk versus reward 
for the ringers who choose to run the full program. Now of course it's natural for many teams to prefer their full-time driver over a road course ringer. And with most of the full-time field being at least passably skilled at turning to the right, it creates an even higher bar for any part-time competitor. But if NASCAR gets its act together and wants to really compete with the likes of F1 and IMSA for the attention of petrol heads around the world, then catering to a broader appeal is surely the way to go. I personally think we haven't seen the last of this debate, but I'd like to know your thoughts on the road course issues, so let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed that video, please remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the channel. And if you want your say on what content I cover next, please consider supporting the channel at the link below. But as always, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, stay safe out on the road, and I'll see you next time. Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes it. Lewis Hamilton, champion of the world. Ewan Kanker, four times title holder.